Hello friends, this video on integrals part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 8. Till now we have seen examples where we integrated some easier terms. For example, we integrated x square, we integrated sin x, we integrated e to the power x, right? Such kind of integrations were simple. But sometimes we get complex integration. For example, you have let's suppose sine square x cos x dx. I have to integrate in this fashion. Or I have two terms. You have some f1x into f2x, right? You have dx. So there are scenarios where we have complex integration to be solved, and those kind of integration we can't solve just by reverse differentiation. So for following such complex integration, we have different methods of integration. Some of them are integration by substitution, integration by using trigonometric identities, integration using some particular function, integration using partial fraction, integration by power. I'll explain each of these in the next few slides. These are the basic types of integration we use. Let's understand what is integration by substitution. So if I have a function, i is equal to fx is my function. Let's suppose i is equal to fx is my function. This is my function. I have to find the integration of this, that is fx dx. To find this value, what we do is we'll put x is equal to g, some function, such that dx by dt is g dash t. So what do you get? dx is nothing but g dash dt. So this dx I can replace with g dash dt. So my this equation will become dx will become if you see right dx will become g dash dt here, right? And fx will become x is gt that is f of gt. So what I have done, I have replaced x with some function gt. I get dx by dt is nothing but g dash t. I have this function integration of fx dx, right? Now x is nothing but gt, so I write instead of fx, I write f of gt. dx is nothing but now if you see g dash t into dt, that is g dash t into dt. And these kind of integrations are little easier to solve. So this is one way, we'll take some examples to understand this. So let's take one example, fx is equal to, let's suppose sine mx. We know sine x. I know integration of sine x, but I don't know integration of, for example, i will be nothing but sine mx dx, correct? I know what is the value of integration of sine x, but I don't know sine mx. So what should I do? So let me assume here this guy as t because sine t I know, right? So this will become sine t. So let's assume mx is equal to t. So in this, if you differentiate both sides, you get m into dx is equal to dt or dt is nothing but or dx is nothing but dx you have to find here dt by m because I am finding dx now. So the same equation I can write as nothing but sine instead of mx we wrote 2 t why because I know how to find the integration of sine t. So now dx has to be dt now so dx is nothing but dt by m dt by m correct. So you take 1 by m comma 1, this is nothing but integration of sin t dt and this I know, sin t dt integration I know, that is nothing but minus cos t, so this becomes minus m into cos t plus some constant, but t is something which is not asked in the question, t is something which you have introduced, so we will replace t with mx, so this becomes minus 1 by m cos mx plus some cos and that is my answer. 
So what you have seen here? In this example, we were asked to find integration of sine mx. But we don't know how to find integration of sine mx. The, the nearest possible integration I know is sine t. So what I did was, I knew sine t, I don't know sine mx. So I replaced mx with t. So I got mx is equal to t. Now I have to replace dx also with dt. So I took mx is equal to t equation. I differentiated both sides. I got m dx is equal to dt. So I got the value of d, dt as nothing but dx as dt by m. So instead of dx, this guy I wrote dt by m and sine mx as sine t. So I got this equation 1 by m is a constant here. Integration of sine t dt, which I know is minus cos t. And again, the question didn't ask me uh, in the form of t. So I replaced t with mx because the question is in the form of mx and I got this as answer. Let's take a few more examples on integration by substitution so that our concept is clear in this. Before I even start this question, let me first tell you what are those things which you will see in a question to find out whether you will use integration by substitution or not. So if I see this exam, this uh, derivative, my i came out to be f of gt into g dash t dt. So let me write here. i is nothing but integration of f of gt, right? g dash t dt. Correct? So if I have some, I can write something in this form, that means I can use integration by substitution. For example, in this case, if you see, if I take 1 plus x square as t, if I take 1 plus x square as t, what I get is 2x dx as dt. Correct? So if you see this here, 2x dx is something coming in here. You know, so with this the advantage is this whole thing can be replaced by dt. So if you see this equation can just now be converted to dt by d. Why? Because this guy is t and 2x dx whole thing is dt. So I can write this as dt by t and if you find to find dt by t integration there is nothing but log t. Correct? Nothing but log t and t is nothing but 1 plus x square plus some constant. So life is simple for me. But the point I'm trying to prove here, what is that thing which you'll see in this function to use substitution? So in this case, if you see when I, you assume something as t. So in this case, I assume this guy as t now. If I assume this guy as t, my dt should be this guy into dx. Or if you see this equation, if my gx is equal to 1 plus x square, right, this is g a. Correct? My g dx x is nothing but 2x. If you see my equation is of this form. f of gx, 1 by gx, into g dash x. If you see, this g dash x is there, into dx. So, whatever you take as t, t dash of this generally is multiplication of dx. In such case, we use integration by substitution. And the reason for this is this whole thing I can write as dt. So, in this case, if you see my equation is simplified. See, the reason why we are using all these methods is to simplify. So, my this equation is a little complex for me to solve with my, with my uh, simple uh, integration rules, the um, reverse differentiation rules. So what I'm doing is, I'm using some method to simplify. Now if you see, now it's a simpler, it's a simpler equation now, or simpler uh, integration. So this is simpler integration, it is easy to solve, and we can solve it. Also one thing to note is, in this case we assume 1 plus x square as t. Even if I assume x square as t, approach 2, I'll say here, I will be able to solve this question. Why? Because if you assume x square as t, here also, if you differentiate both sides, you get 2x dx as dt. And 2x dx is something we are looking for. So in this case, the equation will be reduced to 2x dx will become dt. 
n1 plus x square is t. This is nothing but log of 1 plus t plus some constant and here t is nothing but x square c is going to square. And we see in both the case you get same answer. Correct. So what I'm trying to prove here is you take any any number as t, any variable as t in this case, this or this, the choice of that variable should be such that when you say differentiation of this guy, for example, if you take this guy as t, then 2x dx, these guys should generally come the numerator. The equation should be of this form f of gx into g dash x dx. So here g dash x is this guy, 2x f of gx will be this guy, 1 by f of g is actually, and dx is here. So, if the equation is of such form, in that case, we can use substitution. Please note, not all the cases we will be able to use substitution. So, we will have examples where we may, may not be able to use substitution. Because the point here is, we have to make the complex differentiation into simpler differentiation. Right? So, if you are, if you are using the, uh, uh, a substitution method and that is making a uh, simpler to complex it doesn't make sense because our goal is to make a complex to simpler one and then apply the normal formulas we have that is x to the power n integration is nothing but x to the power n plus 1 by n or you have 1 by x dx that becomes log x or we have cos x integration that becomes sin x or you have e to the power x differentiation, it becomes e to the power x. These are the normal formulas which we have that is the reverse of differentiation. End of the day, we'll apply those only. But before that, since this uh, equations or since this, this differentiation are very complex, we'll try to convert this into simpler form using differentiation. So let's take some more examples to clear our concept. Here we have log x square dx integration. We have to find this. Now, if you see, if I assume log x is t, I have two options. I assume log x is t or x is t. So let me take both options. If I assume log x is t, I get 1 by x dx is equal to dt. So that means this guy is taken care. So my equation will reduce to t square dt. It is easy to find. Let's assume x is t. I will get dx is equal to dt. My equation will be log t by x, log t by t. So this guy is again, if you see, is same as this guy, the first equation. I, I with, with this uh, substitution, I am unable to simplify this. So this substitution of no help to me. But with this substitution, log x is equal to t, my equation is simplified now. And I know how to find the integration of this. This is nothing but t to the power 2 plus 3 by 2 plus 3. That is plus constant. Correct? That is nothing but t cube by 3 plus constant. And t is nothing what? Log x. So it becomes log x cube by 3 plus constant. And that is my answer. So here also we have seen that the proper selection of substituting value. For example, here we have assumed log x as t, I converted this complex integral to a simpler integral and that is the power of substitution. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.